Generally speaking, data transfer is done also through the protocols of the session layer. Here, however, various functions are not so clearly distributed among different protocols, as was the case in the lower layers. It's generally accepted that all user authentication protocols operate in the session layer. We will talk about that later. Either way, this fact concerns both operating systems and individual apps. The typical attack of a session layer consists of taking the identity of an already authenticated user. In the picture above, you can see a Firefox add-on called FireSheep. Some time ago, it was a real hit. After downloading and starting it, you were able to see pictures and personal information of people who were connected to the same Wi-Fi network as you and happened to be using social networking sites. To transfer data, all network services use the HTTP protocol, which is stateless. This means that a server does not know whether an incoming request was sent by the same user as the one before. To enable users to browse a website, the server must emulate a stateful protocol. It does so by attaching a session identifier to each sent packet. Usually this is a short text file called a cookie. If the cookie is sent back, an already authenticated user will be identified. The user will then be able to switch through subpages within one session. If someone managed to intercept the cookie and send it back to the server, he'd be able to impersonate the user perfectly. The attacker wouldn't even have to know login and password. That's how FireSheep works. The main threats connected to the session layer are identity and credential spoofing. The latter may include Kerberos tickets, NTML passwords, or web cookies. Administrators and other people responsible for security can do little to counter these threats. This is the job of the people that create applications that employ these mechanisms. Applications should offer secure ways of user authentication, or at least, use secure authentication protocols. Let's get back to the picture in the FireSheep add-on. If the communication took place through the HTTPS protocol, it wasn't so easy to use the cookie anymore because it was encrypted with a session key. During this lecture, we have learned about the threats and vulnerabilities of transport and session layers of the OSI model. In the transport layer, protocols TCP and UDP provide a lot of information that can be used to take control over a weakly protected operating system. It's more difficult to enlist protocols that are specifically connected with the session layer. Generally, this layer is responsible for authentication. The main threat connected with this layer consists of stealing the identity of web users. Thank you for your attention.